For the past few years, I've been researching machine learning um, and finding interesting ways of using it to create artwork. So I guess by, by using these techniques, I'm able to try and demystify and explore some of the issues surrounding artificial intelligence. Um, I think initially I was interested in this idea of autonomous systems. And there's a history of that in conceptual art from artists like Namjoon Pike and going back to John Cage and thinking about randomness and emergence and basically asking the question, how far can you push autonomy in a machine? Um, can the system ever do a truly creative move? Um, I think as I carried on researching this field, I realized that this can be quite a problematic line of inquiry um, because it adds to the mystification. So I then became more interested in some of the more critical political questions surrounding these systems. So representation and bias, how they're actually trained. Um, because if we're thinking about autonomy and you know, asking these much bigger metaphysical questions about creativity and the machine, we're no longer really thinking about the issues that are affecting us right now with these technologies that are being developed. Um, and one of these issues is bias in the data set. Um, so if you have a facial recognition system that has only been trained on white male faces, um, it won't know what to do with another gender or another race. Um, so I think you know, there are other artists looking at this in a more critical way as well. Artists like Joy Boilamwini and Kate Crawford. And I think it's vital that artists are picking up on some of these issues and questions to make more people aware of these problems. So yeah, the ZZ project started in 2019 with uh, this piece, Querying the Dataset. And this piece is basically taking a facial recognition algorithm or the data set that's used for facial recognition, um, which happens to be quite a homogenous data set, which has been gathered by Western engineers. Um, and it doesn't really do a very good job in representing or recognizing women of color or trans people. Um, so the idea was to take this system, um, which can learn to recognize faces. And then on top of that, there's a system which can generate a fake face. So from all of these images of faces, it can say, this is definitely a picture of a human face. Um, but from that, it can then start to generate and create a fake new identity, a fake face. Um, what I did is I took this system, which had been trained on this standardized data set, um, lacking in representation and containing the biases of the people who had trained it. And I injected it with a thousand images of drag performers. Um, so, in doing so, it moved and shifted all of the weights inside the neural network and it started to create these fluid identities, these other queer, sort of much less recognisable faces. So you can see here, it's constantly shifting between gender with these fragmented makeup coming up. The ZZ project has evolved um, and the current iteration is thinking much more about performance and using deep fake technology. Um, deep fakes are often used, or we're seeing them being used more and more to create fake news, often of people in positions of power, um, and also being used as Instagram filters, which kind of throw away, there's no intentionality, people aren't necessarily thinking about the problems within these systems. So I was interested in subverting this and giving the power back to marginalized identities and thinking about training and creating my own data set of drag performers. Um, so my most recent project and the next iteration of the ZZ project is called the ZZ Show. And this has been made whilst I've been working with experiential AI at the Edinburgh Futures Institute. And it's involved filming 13 different drag performers, some of London's top drag performers. So drag kings, drag queens, um, we've got trans representation, different race representation, and all of these identities. A part of the ZZ project for me is unpacking this black box that is machine learning. 
So exposing the issues with the bias, with the fact that the data sets that are originally trained, they're only as good as the data sets that they have been fed. Um, also trying to expose some of the techniques used in deepfake technology. So the skeleton tracking going on, um, the workings of the neural network, the fact that if you train it for a limited amount of time on a limited amount of data, it's going to have a very limited way of understanding the data that you then subsequently feed it. Um, as, as part of the ZZ project, I want to really try and make these things accessible and communicate them to a different audience. Um, so through performance, we can get an audience of many people that might not have considered a lot of these issues before and actually try and take this and, and recontextualize AI in a completely new space um, through performance and through the medium of drag performance and cabaret and actually try and use some of the tropes from cabaret and musical theater songs to perhaps try and satire in quite a tongue-in-cheek way uh, like narratives around society's relationship with AI. So I'm really optimistic and hopeful about the future um, and I feel that artificial intelligence is at its best when used as a tool to complement human creativity um, and that it can actually teach us a lot about the working of our own brain and the working of our society and our structures. Um, I do feel that it's so important and vital that more artists and scientists are working together and that this sort of interdisciplinary practice is going on. Because um, I think it really empowers people to enter into this conversation and actually try and reshape the future. And I have a real strong belief that artists and creatives working with these technologies can shape the way that they are being developed.